Hey everyone, this is Graham Weeb, and today we're going to be talking about uh, the art of making more art with less art. I know it's a bit confusing, but the whole idea is I want to give you some practical advice for art during your game jam. So the first thing that I want to mention is that you want to make sure that you use all the methods that you know at your disposal. Game jams are very, very quick and you want to get assets in fast. And you also want to make sure that your like stuff looks reasonably good as an artist. So make sure that you use all the methods that you know of. So for example, not everything has to be one type of art. If you're like a 3D artist, like not everything has to be 3D. Uh, if you know some Photoshop concept stuff, you can feel three free to throw that stuff in there. Uh, this is one of my uh, first Game Jam games. It was a fun little game, and this was also the first time where we took uh, a little bit of concept art that we had done early on in the jam, and we had directly imported it into the game. And so really the only 3D stuff that was in this uh, project was the little scuba diver guys. And everything else was either done as a Photoshop element, or in this case, uh, this project used Unity and was done just straight inside of the Unity engine. And so a lot of the uh, methods that uh, were used here weren't just uh, 3D or 2D. There's also like some little particle effects. The little fish that swim in the background are also little particles there. So really just sort of using uh, whatever tricks you know of in the book in order to actually get uh, the most bang for your buck. So you want to make sure that you spend time on the stuff that matters and uh, not on the stuff that uh, people will barely notice. So for example, you want to use custom art where it counts. So things like main characters, this is a great place to spend a little bit of extra time and make something that uh, is really polished. In this case though, because it's a game jam, we wound up going for a style in uh, this project that was a bit, um, uh, a bit simpler as well, just a bit faster to build to get into the, uh, the game a bit uh, easier. And you want to make sure that you use basic art, not necessarily custom stuff, if it makes sense. So for example, in the same project, uh, this area that I've highlighted in green here, the uh, uh, ground plane, the, uh, the stage that everything plays on, this is just some cubes that I jammed into each other with a tiling texture. Like there is nothing special going on here. So we spent all the time on the characters and we spent like basically zero time on like some of the platform stuff because, you know, it kind of sells it. It's, it tells the story. We don't need to put a lot of effort into that. How about that, um, that blurred out uh, element in the background there? That's literally just the stage that I scaled back and moved into the background. Done. Don't need to make anything for that. Very simple. Just sort of fill the space and uh, don't need to waste time on it because it's going to be blurred out, right? Uh, it's also important that if you're wanting to fill a space out, you want to make sure that you have easy adjustments uh, that you're able to make to your assets for wide variety. And you usually don't need a lot of variety in order to fill something out. So for example, in uh, this, we've got like, you know, our character just with a palette swap here to indicate some other uh, characters to interact with. And these cables uh, up at the top, even though they're at different sizes and different colors, they're literally just the exact same asset that I just quickly squashed and stretched into position and tinted inside the engine. Just, you know, get it done easy and cheap, right? These pipes in the back, they're all the same pipe. It's just all the same pipe and I just squash and stretch them around until they actually like fit and look nice, right? Um, here's an example of what not to do. <laughs> so like that was an excellent amount of reuse. The, this project was another game jam that I worked on. It was, it turned out pretty nice, but absolutely everything here was made custom. And as a result, I spent very much an even amount of time on everything and it was a very, very stressful time for me as an artist to actually get everything in and to make sure that everything was looking good. So I wouldn't recommend that you go for the all custom stuff all the way through it, um, uh, especially with a jam like this, it's um, not necessarily going to um, be the best use of your time. You wanna make sure that you get everything in first, very early on, your teammates, if you have teammates, if you're going solo, then, you know, 
you know, no teammates, you, you do what you want. But if you have teammates, they will definitely thank you if you, as an artist, manage to get everything in first, even if it looks really crappy, because then they will have something to actually play with and to start to like build around. And you can always swap that art out later. You want to make sure that you build your work up by just getting everything in first so that your thing is actually playable and people can work. And then you take a look at the parts that draw your eye as an artist that are like, hey, maybe that should get fixed up, or hey, maybe that should get adjusted a bit there. And you slowly build your work up until basically you're out of time. And that's a really solid way to work. Uh, before I leave you, I wanna also give you some general jam advice and uh, what to sort of look into uh, taking out of this jam experience. So you want to know what you're going want to achieve going into the jam. And this can be something on a personal level, it's something that you might want to talk to your teammates about because what you want to get out of this jam might be different than what your teammates have in mind. So if those things align, then that's fantastic. But if they differ a little bit, your design might actually change based on what it is that you and your partners want to achieve. So that's something that's good to keep in mind. Uh, and other than that, you know, Thank you for coming. Thank you, everyone. It's going to be a great time, a great jam. I look forward to seeing you all and, you know, happy jamming. Thank you so much.